This is section 9.5, and hopefully things will start to make a whole lot more sense after this session. So let me increase this a little bit. Okay. So it asks you to look at the periodic table and acknowledge the fact that, so let's just remember what we know so far. We know that sublevel S has two electrons, right? It's one box, two electrons. We know that sublevel P has three orbitals, or three boxes, six electrons. Or uh, sublevel D has uh, five orbitals, holding 10 electrons, and sublevel F has seven orbitals holding 14 electrons. So when you're looking at the periodic table, keep these numbers in mind, okay? These 2, 6, 10, 14. And do you notice anything helpful? So I'm going to pull up a periodic table right here. Now I did this already with one of your classmates. And I was like, just look at the periodic table because he started to notice a few things. Um, and he started to ask questions and finally I just caved and I was like, all right, let's look. So what, what do we notice? When you look at the periodic table, I'm not talking numbers. Like, literally, we could take everything out of these boxes to where they're just empty boxes. And what would I notice about it? What could I say about the periodic table, about the way it's arranged? So if you're looking at it and you start to notice, just imagine, like, there's no H there. There's no 1. There's no 1.00. Everything is just blank. And I start looking at this periodic table. And I start to notice that, hey, you know what? I kind of have sections to this, right? Like, obviously, there's this section right here. But if you start to look, it's like, hey, I really kind of have this section here, right? Now, obviously, helium's over there, but that's because it's a noble gas. I really have, like, this transition metal, these boxes here. And then I really kind of have this section here. Now I'm going to pretend like helium is over here. And I'm like, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put helium in right here. So when I do that, I'm like, and then of course I've got these. Now the, here. this LA is right here and this AC is right here. So it's kind of like those aren't there. All right, so it's just showing that, hey, these are pulled out from right there. So now that I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay, I've got these boxed off. Think of those numbers, those numbers that I just said, 2, 6, 10, and 14. And you guys may start to realize something that, hey, this that I have in the red, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. This that I have in the blue, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Guess what the green is going to have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then here I'll do it and write again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So your periodic table is literally set up in a way that it is telling you what sublevel you are in. Am I in sublevel S where there's just two electrons? Am I in sublevel P where there are six? Am I in sublevel D? or where there's 10, or am I in sublevel F where there are 14? And then we can start to see why there is this skipping around. So yesterday, let me go back to the notes real quick. Yesterday we saw way up here, we saw this chart that it makes sense at first. It's like, oh, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and then you're like, it should be 3d, but it's not. It's 4s, then 3d. Then as you start to really go on up, it starts really zigzagging around. And that's kind of a pain, and it would be a pain to memorize. So now that we know this about our periodic table, um, we're going to color it in, or I'll kind of show you. And when you guys get back, you can do it then too. You can either highlight or outline these. I've had some kids literally kind of shade in. That can sometimes start to look a little messy. Um, so usually I just have kids use different colors and outline. So when you do that, once you outline this, and once again, I'll tell you guys to do this when you get back. I'm going to have you guys write a 1s above here. I'm going to have you write a 2p above here. Because remember, we don't see sublevel p until we get to energy level 2. Now, we don't see sublevel um, d until we get to energy level 3. So I'm going to write a 3d. And we don't get to energy level f, or sublevel f, sorry, until energy level 4. So that's going to be 4f. So now I can literally 
start to read this like a book? I'm like, okay, well, it starts with 1s, so here's 1s, 2. Here's 2s, 2. Now I come over here, I'm at, I'm at 2p, 6. 3s, 2. 3p, 6. Now I jump down, now here's 4s, 2. But look, but before I get to, to 3p right here, or sorry, I guess 4p, I go 4s, and then I go 3D. So we start to see that zigzag. So instead of having to memorize that chart from the previous notes, we now just use our periodic table. And now I'm like, okay, after 3D, what comes next? 2, 3, 4P. And I can go over here, and if I lose track, I can go, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5S. 3, 4, 5S. 4D. 2, 3, 4, 5P. Now look here, 5P, once I get to 6S, look what is right here. This is where you start to get your F. You do F, then D, 4F, and then 5D, right? So if you look at this, it starts to be a little crazy. I go here, and this is 4F, but then when I come back up to here, that's 3, 4, 5D, and then 6P. So let's go back, let's just look at your notes and see this jumping around or stuff. So we said once we get to, oh um, gosh, where is it? That F right here. If you look at this, 6S, but then we go all the way back to energy level 4, 4F, but then we go to 5, then we go back to 6. That would be a lot of stuff just to have to memorize. So once again, your periodic table will help you out with that. Oh, let me go back. All right. So directions for using the periodic table when dealing with this. You're going to locate elements on the table and write each sub-level block in order going from left to right. So that's kind of what I told you. Write the number of electrons in each block. All right, so let's watch this. This is the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. This is the kitchen where the new boyfriend will unofficially become family. The first thing we need to do to find electron configurations is to find the number of electrons for the element. So we can find this on the periodic table, and we're going to look at the number above the element symbol, which is called the atomic number. That'll tell us the number of protons, but it also tells us the number of electrons. And we can use that number as we try to find the electron configuration for whatever element we're interested in. So we'll move helium over to group two, since it fits better there for electron configurations. We have our periodic table, and we just need to memorize that everything, every element in group one ends in S1, group two ends in S2. We'll go over to the P block, those elements in group three, they end in the P1, and then P2 all the way up to P6. Going back to the transition metals, we start with D1 and go all the way to D10. For boron, we'll look first at rho or period one on the periodic table. We can see that the hydrogen is atomic number one. It is in row one. So we're going to write one down. That's the period. It's also the energy level for the orbital that we're talking about. Then we'll go to number two, which ends in S2. So we're going to call the first part 1S2. And then we're done with period one. We'll go to period two, and we see that lithium, atomic number three, that ends in S1. Next, beryllium, that ends in S2. And those are all of the S's in that second period, or energy level. So we're going to put 2S, and since there are two electrons there, 2. Now we're going over to the P block, and we're at boron, which is the element we're writing the configuration for. And we can see that boron ends in P1. Now we're still in the second period, so it's going to be a 2p, and boron ends in 1. So that's it. That's the electron configuration for boron. We'll do chlorine the same way we did boron. In rho, or period 1, we can see with hydrogen, we we'll start atomic number 1, we have the 1s1 and 1s2 full, so we just write 1s2. We go across, and we're actually back in rho, or period 2. So we have lithium and beryllium, 2s2, that's full. We go over to the P block, and we have all of that full, P1 through P6. So we just need to write 2p6. We go down to row 3, we have 
3s1 and 3s2. Those are full. So we write 3s2. We're back over across to the P block, and we can see chlorines there at P5. So we're almost there. So we put 3p, and since chlorine's in the P5 group, 3p5. That's the electron configuration for chlorine. We'll try one more, vanadium. So vanadium has atomic number 23. So we have 23 electrons, and we're going to go through the periodic table until we get the vanadium. So we'll start in period one, there with hydrogen atomic number one. And we see the 1s1 and 1s2, those are full. So we'll write 1s2. Now we move down to the second period. We have the 2s1 and 2s2. Those are full. Then we go across. We're into the 2p's. And all of the p's are full. So we'll put 2p6 down to period 3. 3s2. Then we have all of the 3p's. Those are full as well. So 3p6. We're down to period 4. And we're getting close to those 23 electrons that we have for vanadium. So in period 4, we have 4s1 and 4s2. Those are full, so we'll write 4s2. And then we're into that D block there. And if we go over 1, 2, 3, that's where vanadium is. So we would expect that we would have 4d3. However, this is the one exception that you need to be aware of if you're using this method. When we get to the D block, we always take one away from the period number. So instead of 4d3, we would have 3d3 as the electron configuration for vanadium. So at this point, it really becomes just a matter of practicing them. Okay, so that is the video. Now, what I will say for this, guys, is that, um, well, that's not what I wanted. What I see happen most often with kids on this, let me erase this, is that when they get to like P or D, when they get here, they will want to say, um, or like here, they'll count this as 1P and then this is 2P. That is not the case. Remember, that is why I'm having you write a 2P up here because it starts with 2. That's why this starts with 3. That's where I will see kids mess up the most throughout the, the years that I've taught this. All right, so let's look at some of this then. All right, so let's use this method to write the electron configuration for silicon. So I'm not going to write it right here. I'm going to go back to the periodic table. Um, now, you guys, if you were in class, I know you would have a periodic table. We would have the one on the board, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But we are trying to get to right here. So using that method that he just did, I'm reading this like a book, and that is 1s2. Right? If I put 1s1, I'm telling you that it's just hydrogen. I just have one electron, but I don't. I, I'm going all the way to helium. All right, so then I come down here. 2s2. Now remember, this is 2p. It's just because it's the first one that we see in p, it's 2p. 2p, and I'm going all the way across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I jump down here to 3s2. And now I'm in 3p, 1, 2, I'm in 3p, 2. And that is the electron configuration for silicon. All right? We can also abbreviate electron configurations. So before I even go into that, let's look at something. What if I said, hey, do this configuration for radon? I mean, guys, we are going to be, we're going to have a mile long of 1s is 2s is 2p, all this. It's going to be long. And there's a much easier way to write that. So what do we notice? I believe, let me go back here. It says, what do you notice about all the noble gases? So, of course, we know the noble gases are, no, sorry, are all down this column, right? But what do we notice about that? That, and, and I may try to pull this out of you if you were in class, but I'm just going to tell you right now. 2p6, 3p6, 4p6. Uh, P. There, you can see where they're all ending in 6, of course, except helium, <laughs> which is 1s2. All right? But what we notice is they're all 2p6. They're all full. They're all full on the p level. So, let's go back to this. To abbreviate, we will place the noble gas in brackets and continue to write the rest of the configuration from there. So, for example, sodium. I'm going to do both ways here. So, I'm going to go back 
to my periodic table, I'm just going to do sodium right here. All right, so for sodium, if I were writing it the normal way, the unabbreviated, I need to get to here, I would go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Now this one's not too horrible to write. It's not a lot of writing, but we can simplify this. If you find your p6 right here, you notice that 2p6 is neon. So the abbreviated form, you do this. You place neon in brackets and then go 3s1. So you go to whatever noble gas is before it, for sodium it happens to be neon, put neon in brackets and count from there. All right, so the next one, I'm not going to do this longhand version. I'm just going to show you how you do the shorthand real quickly. They want us to do titanium, so let's look at titanium. I said I'm not going to do the longhand version. We find titanium on here. It is right there. So I'm, I want to know the noble gas before titanium. So I'm going to go backwards here, and argon is my gas before titanium. So I'm going to put argon in brackets, and then I'm going to go from there. So I'm like, okay, I'm here. Now I'm going to start right here. And this is 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 2. Now remember, this is 3d, 3d2. Okay, it makes that a lot easier to write, a lot less writing. All right, so the learning check. The last two sublevel blocks in the electron configuration for cobalt are. Okay, so we want the last two for cobalt. So let's find cobalt on here. All right, so here's cobalt. They want the last two. Well, here's the very last one, and this is 3D. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is 4S2. All right, so this one right here. Alright guys, I'm going to stop right there. I'll uh, do a part two. So part two is coming up and I'll do it, but you guys will be able to click on it right away. Alright, I'm going to stop here.